A new podcast is hoping to shed light on the disappearance of New South Wales woman Janine Vaughan more than 19 years ago. The 31-year-old was last seen on a night out with friends in December 2001 when she hopped into a car outside Bathurst's Metro Tavern. Well, joining me now is the Australian's National Chief Correspondent, Hedley Thomas, to talk about Episode 6 of The Night Driver. Here we are all of a sudden, Episode 6. It's amazing how time flies, isn't it, Hedley? Great series so far. Can you, can you pitch Episode 6 to us? What can the listeners expect? Thank, thanks very much, mate. Yes, it, this, uh, this episode significantly revolves around a man uh, who was the pharmacist in Bathurst, a quiet, deeply spiritual man. His name's Andrew Jones. And he became a very prominent person of interest in the police investigation. Uh, nine, ten years ago, police did seize the car that Andrew Jones had, his red Renault 19. Uh, they've taken DNA samples from that. Uh, they believe that uh, those... Uh, samples under analysis may still be promising for their investigation and they have talked about that um, but I've spoken to several women and they will be heard in the uh, episode today who have their own um, concerns about interaction with a man they say was Andrew Jones now look he has absolutely denied wrongdoing very strenuously and uh, and I've had contact with him and his criminal defence lawyer about uh, how he believes he has been unfairly targeted for police for many years. Um, uh, he's um, uh, living in New South Wales. He's a locum pharmacist. He's obviously um, very distressed at the attention that uh, his connection to Janine has caused. Um, his pharmacy was close to where she worked in the menswear store, and, and so... Uh, they had seen each other. He had bought clothes from the menswear store. Um, he was single. He still is. He he lived at the Scott School in Bathurst. And uh, uh, he's a very interesting study. And so episode six is a, a deep dive into the evidence in relation to him, his denials, and some new material that, that we've um, um, found and, and uh, checked out since this podcast started. It's, it's, it must be so frustrating for the police, you know, after all this time, to, to continue to, to keep running into these dead ends, you know, and, and not just back then, but also throughout the years, and all these leads kind of lead to nowhere. Yeah, that, that's right, Peter. I think um, uh, it, it hasn't been through, you know, lack of trying. I yeah. mean, there have been numerous investigations by police, but unfortunately this case, um, very unusually went off the rails because of a suspicion that uh, then became part of a police integrity commission investigation, a suspicion that the town's own detective sergeant, the investigations manager, who was also the deputy mayor, was himself a possible killer. And uh, this was um, eventually debunked, but it took many um, um, years and, and you know, public hearings where town gossip and innuendo um, was rampant about his alleged involvement. And I think that undermined public confidence in police, no doubt setting back the homicide investigations because people who might have known something would have thought, well, if a cop is in act actually involved here, do I want to come forward? I don't know really what's going on. Maybe, maybe what I know is, is going to get me into trouble. Um, so yeah. that's been a complicating feature. 